Hi there, Jared here from Digital Matter, and today I'll be taking you through an interesting discussion where we talk about NBIT in the use case of mobile asset tracking. So just a quick outline of this short video, uh, we're going to look at how LTM and NBIT have previously been used in static versus mobile tracking scenarios. Uh, we'll touch on why MBIT was previously considered unfit, along with how it's now improved up to today's standards. Uh, we'll then run in through some real-world tests that we've conducted and speak to some of your own testing. So looking at how LTM and MBIT has been used in the case of static and mobile asset tracking, you know, historically MBIT has been a static solution and LTM has been the mobile roaming solution. Um, the concern of lengthy cell transitioning uh, has always seen as a blocking factor and um, there was always concern around what happens to the data uploads um, during these lengthy transitions, which is why we've done some real world testing to um, prove what the results look like today. So looking at why MBIT was previously considered unfit is it's one of its major limiting factors was throughput. Uh, so you were spending more time on air, uh, which was using more battery life um, and also yielded um, slower upload times. Uh, there were some inefficient power saving mechanics uh, which essentially left your devices at the mercy of the network to control. And uh, there was also concern of lengthy cell tower transitioning times and the knock-on effect of those. Um, and finally, there was also network maturity. LTM had obviously had some prioritization compared to that of MBIT. MBIT has certainly matured though along the way um, with MB2 really uh, gearing up what the technology is capable of. It's also now a 5G uh, technology and this came with a massive amount of power saving improvements which really mitigated a lot of the issues that i previously mentioned um, as well as some optimizations and improvements around cell positioning and specifically improved bandwidth and throughput which uh, really made a massive difference when you want to start looking at firmware over the air updates so looking at some real world testing uh, we performed our first set of tests in south africa um, an area where MBIT is only just being rolled out, so it's still fairly juvenile, um, and yet the results we're seeing are actually really promising, and it's certainly geared to uh, take on the role of both static and mobile asset tracking. So looking at about a 15-minute trip we did um, on an asset that was varying at quite high speeds, um, just to really you know, put the cell transitioning times through their paces, we've seen some great consistency in those averages, uh, where they've ultimately come out um, on par between 2G and MBIT. And we've actually seen some better consistencies in the transients between those transmission delays. So you're actually achieving better near real-time consistency with MBIT as a result. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that there is load shedding which plays a factor in this region. And um, it certainly goes to show how resilient MBIT is in handling that by offering improved coverage per tower as compared to 2G. So our second set of tests were performed in Australia where both LTM and MBIT networks are fairly mature. Uh, we do see that in the improved average transmission delay times, which is great. Um, and we only see a few small transients in you know, the worst case transmission delays, uh, which is really great to see and proves that you know, we, we can really achieve both static and mobile um, tracking on either technology at this point. So just to summarize some of those results that we've seen, um, you know, we're seeing average transmission delays on MBIT generally one, I think one to 15 seconds, um, closer to the one. And we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, network rollout to complement MBIT. Um, you know, it's proving to be quite a capable technology um, and MB2, as the specification, has really uh, made up for the lacking components that MB1 originally suffered from. Um, we also noted that when the devices are performing cell tower transitions on MBIT, your connection to the server is actually preserved. Um, so you have quite a nice grace period for the device to reattach onto another cell tower and continue its upload without effectively destroying the upload. Um, and we've seen a great ability to monitor uh, mobile assets in near real time um, as a result. Uh, the great thing is also seeing that the bandwidth has improved on MBIT, so we're easily able to achieve um, firmware updates over the air or adding updates, whatever other um, uplink and downlink activities you require in your scenario. Um, and effectively, it's a future-proof solution being a 5G technology. And so looking at the global coverage map for both LTM and MBIT, 
uh, we can see a lot of regions that are solely investing in MBIT um, and others that have had LTM previously that have now complemented that with MBIT as well. So what comes next? Well, really that's up to you. Um, we encourage you to try out MBIT as a capable technology in your next um, deployment. You know, see how it performs in your region, um, whether it can meet your needs. We can certainly help from a hardware and technical assistance perspective. And uh, we've got a great knowledge base that we encourage you to go and read through, which is really documented you know, the years of um, experience and the results that we've we found in using both LTM and MBIT um, in a range of use cases. So thank you for your time. And uh, we hope that you found this very short video um, insightful. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon about uh, the interesting use cases that you plan on tackling. All the best.